So this is a really cool place where I'm at. I came out this evening just scouting out some fishing locations. And I came to a little spot I fished about five years ago, the Wabashiki Wet, uh, Wetland Wildlife Preserve in West Terre Haute, Indiana. And I fought to get my kayak out here and fish this lake about uh, five years ago. And I thought, oh, let me go check it out today. I know it's been really dry and the lake is completely dried out. So check this out. It's really an interesting site out here to see uh, what is the lake most of the time that completely dried up and what was left to the bottom. It looked like it was still water out here. I had no idea this was this shallow when I was out on it last time. That is funny. I must have been, I think when the last time I was out here, this was probably two feet of water up here. And so I went out here fishing and I didn't have any clue just how shallow this was. And I'm not kidding, this is about every 10 years this will dry out like this. And I didn't know right now it was. I looked out here and I thought it was covered in moss. Wow. This is a lake normally. Those deer are still out here on the, on the bed with me. Oh, check this out. The mussels. Where they had their last stand. Uh, here's one that was alive. This one was alive when the water went down. That's a giant floater. You could tell, but that's how they like to sit. It's embedded sideways in the water. These are really pretty when they're Shells are fresh, they're real bright colored purple. Look at all the mussels, look at this. There's a little cache of them here. So the raccoons probably came through here and had a heyday with these mussels. This deer is still sitting out here on the, on the dry bed, staring at me. It's like, what is this dude doing? Look at all these mussel shells. This is cool. Here's a Asian carp, last resting place for an Asian carp of some kind. Here's a last resting place for Asiatic, or excuse me, a uh, another mussel. That's pretty cool. And a giant floater with the shadow over it. You can see this mark here. This was a mussel. Boom, and that's where he. He ended up getting stuck. Couldn't, couldn't survive after that. Now this is interesting here. What is this? Look at this deer over here. Look at this guy. He's been standing out there, or she has been standing out there staring at me forever. These are big muscles. Oh my goodness. Now that is an exceptionally large size. found a living one that size. I love freshwater mussels. It is illegal to harvest them in Indiana, so I'm collecting them. Or I, I look at them, I identify them, and I put them back. Of course, they're all dead here. Each one of these spots, like this, is where a fish ended up. There's some more parts there. Look out across here. Now this looks like the last stand. I think this is all the fish carcasses right here. Think about this, what happened here? This is not unnatural. This actually is just part of a process around here. Fish get caught in here, water goes down, they all die, water comes back up. Fish cut flooded back in here from the river. Oh yeah, I see a lot of gar. Look at this, holy smokes.
This is like a vulture paradise. Look at that. So that's a long nosed gar right there. Oh man, almost there. Uh, there's a short nosed gar. There's another, there's another short nosed gar. A lot of short nosed gar in here. Almost, I don't see anything but gar. And you know what that says? It doesn't say that there weren't other fish in here. Gar were the last ones to be able to survive when the water got incredibly low. That's why we're finding all of the other fish carcasses out in the outlying areas because when the water was when the water quality got bad enough, those fish died and their bodies were probably still floating in water. At least some water. Wow. Every one of these is a gar, either a long nose or a short nose gar in here. I don't see anything other than gar. Well, in a way, this is really useful for me because I wanted to fish this lake a lot and never realized just how shallow it was. I also never realized how few species there were in here. Um, basically, all I see are gar and Asian carp. I haven't seen any carcasses that look like they were something else. And one of the reasons I can tell is the uh, common carp and grass carp will, will leave big scales. You'll find tons of them when they die. Uh, when the Asian carp die, you'll find their gill plates. Gar skins last forever. Um, look at the size of that beast. Oh man, you want to know what that is? That is a state record long nose gar. If that was caught on a hook and line, he would uh, he would have been a state record. The other thing I'm kind of taking away from this is if I watch this a little closer for dry seasons, this would really be a fun place to come drag a seine net when the water gets low. I like gar meat, so it would be fun to pull a whole bunch of them out of there and sit here and cut them up and you know, have gar balls for the year. Okay, now this is neat, look at this. I don't know how well this will show up on the camera, but look across here. Do you see all these little fibers glistening in the, in the sunlight? See them? Yeah. So this place is like covered in spider webs. That's pretty neat. Look at all the spider webs. So a lot of times these uh, areas that flood a lot, they're ghost towns for mushrooms because the water kind of wrecks the mycelial growth in the ground. One exception is willow trees. Willow trees love being by the water and oyster mushrooms love willow trees. And I just spotted this from across the lake here. And I think we got us a nice healthy oyster here. Oh, look at that. Nice little flush. I didn't bring a knife out here, so I'm just try ripping these off. They should come off just fine. Oh, nice, clean. Look at that. Look how shiny that top is. So anybody that watches this channel, if you're also a mushroom hunter, tell me if you ever run into this. You go to put some mushrooms in your bag and you find uh, the mushrooms for the last trip that you forgot to do anything with when you came home. They smell good. Okay, so here's the last location of a fish, and this is a buffalo. I'm certain of it, because that rib bone right there is the rib of a, a buffalo. Kind of neat. That you can tell what kind of fish it was. They have real substantial rib bones. Make good um, sewing needles or something if you sharpen them up. My bike. Right, I just rode my bike back this trail. And this is the lake I actually came here to scout. I was thinking about dragging my kayak back here before I realized just how low all the water levels are. Now look at this. I don't know how to describe this smell to you.
these are all dead fish. Look like carp, look like common carp mostly. There's still some survivors in here though. I see some moving around. Oh man, this is some dang nasty water. It's the gar. The gar are still alive in here. I guarantee it, that's what's going on here. Bowfin, okay, these are bowfin right here. That's a bowfin. That's a common carp. That's probably a gar right there chewing on a common carp body or some other dead fish body. Look at this, this is wild, look at this. Got a big boy right here that's dead. And think about this, this is again, it's not really unnatural. This is a natural part of the process around here. That's a big bowfin right there. Got myself in a little bit of a dilemma here. I'm sinking my boots deeper and deeper in the mud. I really don't want to take them off. But this is just some real sticky stuff here. <laughs> oh, freaking hilarious. I'm going to come back filthy. I'm coming back here tomorrow. I'm bringing my saying net, maybe my bow, maybe even a fishing pole that I could toss out here because these things are going to eat anything they get a chance at right now. So I've wanted to catch a state record gar for a long time. I almost guarantee state record short nose gar is in that hole. So I'm going to come back tomorrow. I'm going to bring my saying net and run it through that hole over there. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to see if I can pull a gar out of here. Maybe one that catches me a state record.